We're all set. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting, informational meeting, for the Bakersfield Town Report uh, into session. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, we appreciate that you're participating in this, and we are deeply sorry that we cannot have a regular town meeting. However, I think that uh, in the long run, more people will be able to put their opinion in uh, in this format, especially with the Australian ballot. Um, we've relied on the few people that actually showed up to town meeting over the years uh, to decide town issues that uh, probably could have been better addressed uh, from a broader uh, recall of the citizens. Hopefully this will work and I'm going to turn this over to Josh and he's going to, he's a younger fellow than I am and he understands the Zoom stuff better than I do so enough said. Here you go Josh. Thank you. Thank you Lance. Um, just to echo what Lance said, we as a board understand that this is not an ideal situation for our town and it's due to many uncontrollable circumstances. Uh, we're trying to make the best of an unfortunate situation. I would like to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded and we will make the link available um, as many ways as we can. Um, it'll probably be tomorrow around noontime before we can get that link live. Um, we'll put it on the town website and I will see if I can get it on the Facebook page for those that follow in Facebook. Um, as Lance said, the town has gone to Australian ballot for this year. That means that there is no um, adjustments or alterations that can be made to the articles. This is strictly an informational meeting. Uh, clarifying questions can be made, but uh, at this time, since it's gone Australian ballot, we do not have the ability to change anything. Um, Zoom directions for all involved. Articles are going to be discussed in order. So if you can plan your initial questions, they can be submitted. We have two moderators that are going to help us and um, put your questions in order on a Google Drive that will, is shared with myself and the board will address them in order. Um, we will not be circling back once we cover an article. It, it'll be covered for tonight unless we have time at the end of the night. So if you have a question on an article, please get it in ASAP so that we can you know, make sure everybody's questions are answered. Um, please start your questions with your first and last name so that we can make sure we are addressing the correct people with the correct question and a number that the question goes to article wise. Uh, follow up questions will be addressed after everyone's initial question on a given article has been answered. If you ask a question after an article has been passed and discussed, it will either be covered at the end of the meeting or on Friday. In order to keep the meeting flow efficient, please address all processes and procedure questions to the Zoom host. Um, ideally, there's the chat function at the bottom center of your screen. That is the easiest way for you to get your questions answered. Uh, in order to avoid audio complications, all uh, visitors will be muted until it is their turn to speak and our moderators will unmute you. Those are the meeting, um, the Zoom parts that we can handle. As far as voting, uh, I have talked with Kathy and absentee ballots. Absentee ballots can be requested until noon on, or sorry, 11 a.m. on Friday. In town, it is taking about one business day to receive ballots. 
Um, keep in mind if you request on Friday and it's gonna take a business day, that is probably still going to have to be dropped off here in person. Um, the deadline for drop off is March 2nd before the close of time, 7 p.m. Uh, absentee ballots can be picked up here at the town clerk's office anytime during normal business hours. Our normal voting booths will be open on Tuesday, March 2nd, and I can assure you that uh, all of our voting area attendants will be taking all necessary precautions to keep the entire community safe. I feel like they did an excellent job during November and I have no concerns with this election. Um, if anybody has corrections to the town report, please make them in the uh, chat item also, or a chat area also. Uh, we, uh, we're gonna try to get through this and we'd prefer if that wasn't a constant issue. Um, we have already addressed the spelling of Lane Lawyer and Chris knew it. So if there's any others, uh, the chat function is where you would go for that. As far as the meeting flow, we're gonna start with article four and continue either until we run out of time or we get to article 22. These are located on pages eight and nine of your town report. Um, the board's gonna give a brief summary of each and then address questions as they arise. I, I think that's all of the items for carry through. If we can start with article number four. Hey Josh, it's Sarah Jo. Um, just to clarify the process. Yep. Um, folks, when you have a question, please use the Zoom chat exclusively. We won't be we won't be unmuting folks to ask live questions. We do have our first question, and Josh, can you confirm that you can see it? Uh, we have our first question. Let me go to my other section here. Article four, Sue Skonsky, Sonsky. I apologize for the pronunciation of any names. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I apologize ahead of time. Why does the select board want to do this? And if passed, how much will the town clerk be paid? That is, uh, any, anybody particular want to take that question or? It'd be the same salary. I can answer the question. I will answer the question as to how much the clerk will be paid. Uh, the clerk will be paid a salary of $12,000 a year plus collection of fees, uh, plus whatever they can get for uh, delinquent taxes. As far as why the board select uh, chose to go this route, um, it was brought to the board that uh, our current uh, town clerk was not going to run. That was miscommunication that we received. Um, so this was brought up because there was nobody else at that time running. Uh, the town, we looked into what we could do to get people for a town clerk that's outside of our town. And the way that would have to happen is for that person to be appointed by the town, by the select board. Um, obviously, you know, we're on this board because we like our community. We love the town of Bakersfield. We don't want this to go outside of the town. So our first thought was hopefully somebody runs, but this was a backup measure so that we could have a town clerk. Um, at our last meeting on Monday, there was a motion made that if article four passes, the select board would appoint the person that is elected by our town this year for the next three years. So if article four passes and um, 
whoever wins the election of town clerk, that is the way it will remain for the next three years. There will be no question on that. Are there any other questions on Article 4? Seeing none, we're going to move to Article 5. Shall the town vote to have its property taxes due on October 4th, 2021? If I recall, this is the same date that it is usual tax day. Uh, there is no change to this. No, it's about the same time every year. Seeing no questions. And to the people that are online, if you have a question in regards to any article, please just put the article number with your first and last name it can be put into the, uh, the, the system that I'm looking at and we can address it when we get there. You don't have to wait for us to get to that article to ask your question. That'll help us streamline this. Next up, Article 6. Shall the town authorize the select board to set the tax rate to cover the expenses as voted? Still seeing no questions, and, and I'm the only one that's using my I'm not muted. <laughs> <coughs> hey, if you find yourself having trouble with the chat box or anything else, we can see a lot of faces up there. Just wave your hand. We'll get somebody to answer you. Seeing no questions on article six we'll move to article seven shall the town authorize the select board to borrow money in anticipation of taxes as most of you know we're voting on a 2021 budget we're already well into 2021. That makes handling the budget difficult. So sometimes we need to borrow money. Any questions at all? I appreciate the fact that you're making this go so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Article eight. Shall the town appropriate $300,000 for road work? You will note this is one number. In past years, we have split it into winter work and dirt work. We have combined that into one account for road work. There's a question on the board. Okay. Bill, okay. So the question is from Bill Irwin. Why does the select board want to do this? And if passed, how much will the town clerk be paid? Huh? Okay, uh, Bill, that's a question for number four. Oh, sorry. Why did the group go from 130? Uh, so Bill, uh, we didn't, we went from 130, but if you look also, um, dirt work and winter work, we're combined. Um, this is, it's, it's got to be combined when we go to apply for the loans. So it's, it's the same number. It's just they broke it down into road work instead of dirt work and winter work. I hope that answers. I see that. All so right. it's two line items in one. Yes, correct. Um, I'm not sure who asked the question. We have the question, how much did we receive from FEMA? 
At present, we have received nothing from FEMA. Uh, we have recently uh, reworked our accounts with FEMA. Uh, we've been appointed a new contact. Uh, this is working oh so much better. Um, things are moving forward at a decent pace now. We are having weekly meetings, uh, whereas before things seemed to stall, we could not get answers, we could not get any kind of response. Uh, we had only about uh, three meetings total in almost a year's time. And uh, yes, the jobs need to be complete before we can submit for payment. And the whole project, that means all the projects, all the jobs in the town of Bakersfield have to be done before we can submit for payment from the state of Vermont. FEMA will pay 75% of our expenses. Uh, the state of Vermont will pay the next 12 and a half percent and seven and a half percent will be our responsibility. Does that answer the question? I'm not sure who that came from, but. Okay. Are there any other questions on article eight? Um, well, we said we weren't going to do that. <laughs> um, it was answered. Okay. I was going to say, I can't see the question right now, but, um, I, I've also been asked, uh, just for anybody that's new, because we have had a bunch of people that have, uh, joined since the beginning. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom center of the zoom sec, uh, window, there is a chat button there. Um, if you click on that, that will open the chat on the right hand side of your computer screen and allow you to be interactive in this process if you have any questions. Thank you. Number nine. Shall the town appropriate $10,000 for the paving and grant fund matching funds? for grants. Any questions on this article? As an aside, we only do paving projects uh, every three or four years probably. They are usually very expensive and they are matching funds. Uh, they are never, they don't ever give us a grant that pays everything. Uh, so they it's usually 80-20. Yeah, 80% uh, is paid by the grant, 20% by the town. But a simple paving project uh, can easily cost $100,000. Hmm. I see that there was a, I guess it was a follow-up question to the, to the FEMA question. I've lost it now, I can't see it on here. Uh, do you have, oops, sorry. Do you have a idea as to how much you would receive from FEMA? Uh, ultimately, that would vary depending on how much each um, thing would cost. Yeah, for instance, the Goat Path project was allocated uh, up to $1.26 million. Uh, we did the demolition uh, for approximately $80,000. Uh, we'll get 75% of that from FEMA, 12.5% from the state. Uh, ultimately, I would say somewhere, I'm hoping, I, I, I'm guessing, uh, around a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. 
And again, that was a, a secondary question to Article 8. Article 9, seeing no questions, we will go to number 10. Shall the town appropriate, number 10 would just, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Shall the town appropriate $10,000 for the bridge repair fund? Sorry about that. Uh, there again, matching funds for the Goat Path Bridge down by the Allen Farm would come out of this fund. The new bridge is going to cost around $600,000. Uh, that is from an estimate uh, from last fall. I don't know uh, how much that's going to change. Okay. Seeing no other questions. Article 11. Shall the town appropriate $265,000 to defray the general expenses of the town? I know I saw a question. Yeah, I see it. I just, I, it's not on my box here. All right, sorry. I'm going to try and read it off the screen as long as the screen doesn't keep moving. Uh, why are the funds to, uh, for the town hall repair fund and bookkeep, book restoration, preservation, diddle, diz, uh, excuse me digitalization. digitalization fund mesh uh, uh, it's town. See page 20 and look at page 19 in the 2019 annual report ten thousand dollars from town hall repair uh, transferred to block restoration and it doesn't show that it was moved back to the town hall repair fund lance can i this is abby can i jump in on this one absolutely abby thank you okay the reason for that is some of this stuff is mandated per statute by the state of vermont with how the clerk fees are designated meaning when there's a recording you pay 15 dollars some of that goes back to the state some of it goes to the book repair fund it's been allocated they made a change in the middle of the year i believe it was last year about how the clerk fees were broken up so we are required to have a book restoration fund for all of the land records so if any of the land records need to be updated or repaired, restored anything, we are required by statute, state statute to have this fund. Um, the $10,000 that was done was the town hall repair or building maintenance was for the ramp that is now outside of the back entrance. And if there's ten money moved, it's because we all, we had it on our spreadsheet or how we tracked it was kind of combined. We had to separate it out per the state. So it was mo money that was allocated for the book funds that we just created a better tracking system for. Thank you, Abby. Linda, did that answer your uh, question? We have another question here. Sorry, go ahead, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question here from Carrie Flieger. Why is there an increase of forty thousand dollars? Oh, no, no problem. Um, thank you, Linda. Uh, why is there an increase of forty thousand dollars? That question comes from Carrie Flieger. The main reason on that one is the fire department contract. Uh, that mostly has to do with uh, contracts that we're obligated to pay annually uh, that have not been uh, reflected in the budget for the last few years. Uh, for instance, uh, the fire department contract, <coughs> excuse me, goes up every year, uh, and that's just one of them. Uh, so the extra $40,000 is to defray the increase costs 
of day-to-day -day expenses and annual expenses such as that. Um, so that they, they haven't been reflected in the last several years' budgets. They just caught up with us. Carrie, did that answer your question? I did not see that one. Uh, Whose question? John mm. Thompson. Uh, John Thompson asks, what are general expenses? Is this debt defrayment or operational costs? And I think Lance just covered that. It, it is operational costs. For not just the town hall, but for the town itself. And I see a yes from Carrie Flieger. Great, thank you. Any other questions on Article 11? Okay. Again, if if you have questions, I I am seeing some hands flying in there. They <laughs> we are really trying to do as uh, all of it through the chat function. Um, and that's why. <laughs> And this is to keep, you know, background noise and as much as possible limited on on how much sidebar conversation there is. So if it can be um, sent through the chat, I, I know I just said that and I know I saw some hands going, so I am going to give it a couple minutes before we move on. What was the question? I am not seeing... in article 11 i can that be copied that that uh, where are you attaching that to linda i i saw the question it's out of context that's all i'd be happy to talk to you linda you call me at home uh, about that i i'll give you a brief one um, it is ongoing. Uh, I, I signed some, uh, got some uh, requests for grant money going today with uh, the NRPCA, uh, NR, Northwest Regional Planning Commission, I'm sorry. And uh, it, it is ongoing. We're still working on that same project. Um, it was delayed horribly. Uh, by the COVID-19 situation, uh, just by the people not being able to get together. I'd be happy to talk to you uh, in person for further detail if you want. And I, I think her question is, is what are the expenses for, for that? And the expenses are we pay initially and then we are reimbursed. So that's um, money out, money back in. It would be shown. I'm not exactly sure where that would be shown. But it isn't because it uh, hasn't happened yet. The I'll give Lance a call. Excellent. Thank you, Linda. <sighs> Which project are we talking about on that? The Brigham Academy. Yeah, we haven't been built for any of, the, uh, any of the new stuff yet. Right. The other stuff's already come in and gone. Again, I, I, I got to ask, you know, all the questions need to be submitted through the chat feature. Um, we are not, we are not the ones that are controlling this chat feature. Um, I do have a computer in front of me, but this is so that the people that are controlling the chat feature can communicate directly to me without this being uh, a, a screaming match. So. Yeah, uh, there is a box in the chat feature. It says to, it's at the bottom. We need to make sure that says everyone. It needs to be addressed to everyone. Do you have the question from Carrie? 
Uh, we we addressed the one of them. Oh, did you have, she must have another question. Oh. BCA. BCA is the Board of Civil Authority. Um, that expense uh, had to do. No, it was with the, the old car house there. Mm -hmm. Well, there was there was multiple there was multiple yeah. uh, 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 board civil authority deals with uh, uh, grievances about uh, taxes, um, uh, and it costs money to get everyone together to go uh, for inspections, to, to make the reports. Uh, Four hundred and sixty dollars is. Uh, actually on the short side from what it usually is. Carrie, did that answer your question? I guess I'm not really clear on what that is. And the board's civil authority uh, consists of all the justices of peace. The uh, select board, um, as I said, uh, they deal with uh, grievances um, and they're called together as a group uh, to adjudicate. Uh, they're a, a quasi-judicial board. Uh, so we can make judgments uh, on whether or not a tax assessment of a property, for instance, uh, is fair. Uh, if a citizen of the town has a grievance, they would bring it before the Board of Civil Authority and it will be discussed and inspected and gone over and we'll review the uh, information and make a judgment. The select board is, the members are only members of the BCA. They do not control it or run it. There is a separate chairman for that committee. Did that help, Gary? She, okay, I got the thumbs up. She's yep. given us Thank you. Again, this is an informational meeting on the budget asking clarifying questions and informational questions um th there are some random questions coming through that are not necessarily in per pertain to this um and those in a typical year could be addressed from the floor in a meeting but as i stated at the beginning this is not a typical year and this is an informational meeting um, so please keep the questions directed to the articles at hand and we will do our best to answer them uh, 12. well let me make sure we get all of I mean, mm. it, it, it sort of had something to do with general expenses because that is paid out of general expenses. Um, article 12. Shall the town appropriate $55,834.84 for the annual payment of trucks. We're making payments on two trucks at, the point, at this point. This is simply those two payments added together. One we have two years left on and one we just started on. 
Two? Two. Yeah. yeah. Any questions on truck payments? Article 12. Hey, Lance, it's Abby again. Um, I'm seeing questions in the group chat that are, we're still on Article 11 that no one's addressed yet. I don't know if they're coming through to you. I know I'm not seeing everything here, but. The, the television is here. just out of my visual range. I apologize. We're supposed to be getting some of these on the. Okay. Uh, mute me once you're talking so there's no reverberation. Okay. You guys are muted. There you go. I, we're having trouble seeing this television screen. It's just outside my visual range, so. Josh, these are the questions that are highlighted. Okay. That are that were coming in out of sequence and were not connected to an article by the person asking the question. Okay. Um, uh, Random questions, do we want to take now or do we want to wait until the end and address all together? They're going to be all over the board is the problem. Not Come all over the board. Again, well, the agenda was to discuss the articles I, first and then if we had time, we'd discuss further issues afterwards. I think those questions are about the 265,000. Okay, which ones? I, I, Terry Flieger, I'm wondering if there's a... Okay. Okay, we can go over them now if that's how we so choose. Uh, the first one is from Mary. Would Abby try to answer why expenses could just pile up over several years? I'm not sure what this is in reference to, Abby. Um, it's... It actually was me, and I'm you, and, and uh, it, the question was in relation to Article 11 and uh, the increase in uh, general expenses. And because of you know, operator error, I had a hard time getting, uh, getting it to post to the chat box. So that's why it came up late. So it was a question to ask Abby if she, um, she presumably she knows where the money comes in and where the money goes out and how, uh, as you stated, the, that the expenses just sort of caught up with you over, over more than a year. So, um, so that's why we're asking such a big increase this year. I can jump in and kind of answer that for you. And um, I think just the way that was worded back to everybody wasn't the greatest either, but we've been level of funding or the budget has been level funded for the general fund. If you look over past history, it stays the same. We do an increase and it stays the same for two, three, four years. But we have signed contracts with the Bakersfield Volunteer Fire Department and Amosburg Ambulance Service that factor in a two to three percent increase per contract every year that was not being properly budgeted when the general fund budget was going out because if the broad budget is being done properly, you're going to be seeing an increase every year. So it's just now trying to really stay on top of the budgets and try to factor in everything that we can. Also, another thing that plays into it, the increases is wages. Um, this is going to touch on Carrie's question a little bit. Wages from 2017 are showing we're budgeting for $26,000 more because we have new zoning administrator that's gonna be doing more hours at the request of the select board. We also can't control and have to do our best estimate as to animal control. Um, we have the listers time in there. Some years are busier than others, depending on what comes through with property taxes. So there's all these little things that add up. Plus you got your basic fuel expenses just for you know heat, electricity, there's rates that we can't control. So it, it's trying to stay more on top of what the budgets are and factoring in every kind of little piece of the budget of when there needs to be a little bit of an increase. So it's getting us more on track to where the budget should be. Could we be unmuted, please? Yep. Thank you, Abby, for that description. I hope that answered your question, Ewing. Uh, yeah, close enough. Okay. <laughs> 
Next question is from Kerry. Uh, I was wondering about uh, appropriate time to discuss wages. Wages have gone up almost 36,000 since 2017. Page 13 of the report. I believe Abby I believe did just did. cover that. Um, if uh, I, the only other thing that I think could affect that would be overtime. Mm -hmm. And that is all dependent on snow and storm issues. Not, not to interrupt you, Josh, this isn't the road budget. This is the general fund budget. So overtime and all that doesn't play into it. Oh, okay. This is the other one. All right. Yeah, this is just the general fund budget. So it's just going to be factoring in um, with our new zoning administrator, Melanie, working a little bit more after some of what we used to and trying to anticipate animal control, everything else with it. So again, it's getting the budget more on track to where it should be. Yes, and I can I can attest that our new zoning administrator has already cleared up a couple issues for us that have been hot topics and um yep we're we're very appreciative to have somebody on top of the on top of this like she is and this is in response to requests from the townspeople there have been many requests that the zoning administrator be available for more hours during the week uh, next question um is from paul stanley He's unsure of an article. Uh, is the school district bond for BES building upgrades? Page 21. Well, that's a school question. I don't, I'm, I don't Can I pop in on that one, Josh? It's Abby. Sorry, I'm taking over as usual. Please do. No, that's fine, Abby. Go ahead. <laughs> the bond, um, Paul, is part of the school budget. So that might be more of a question for the informational meeting for the school which is going to be tomorrow night but yes. this is just a breakdown um because obviously Bakersfield residents we pay for the taxes for our portion of the school and there is a bond so we do put this in here as a notes payable but this comes strictly out of the school budget the town of Bakersfield doesn't write the check the school writes the check for the bond so it's included in your school tax Well, that's quite a number. Thank you again, Abby. Next Every question is, Thursday, right? is unknown who it comes for, and it's why was Allen Bridge not part of FEMA? Um, the Allen, you, you, is. Goat Path Bridge is. is part of FEMA, right. but we still owe seven and a half percent of that. Seven and a half percent of uh, six hundred thousand uh, plus uh, eighty thousand for the demolition is a significant amount. I hope that answers the question. Um, I believe this is the last question on Article 11. Uh, Scott Flieger, is there a plan to collect delinquent taxes? It's up to almost 90,000 delinquent taxes. The plan with that is to, um, I believe, line up a tax sale and collect the delinquent taxes. However, with uh, COVID going on, uh, the state basically said that will not happen last year. Um, I believe there is plans for that to happen this year. So I hope that answers your question, Scott. Looking at twenty. That's for six hundred seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, that'll empty that account. It's based on six hundred ninety thousand. Yep. Yep. Looking at taxes from twenty nineteen, twenty eighteen. Uh it's the same thing uh, we don't do a tax sale every year um, 
I think Kathy usually does one every other year since she's been here. Um, and when it hit this year, there was COVID. COVID the, and it was a directive from the state. I am getting enough. The, the initial steps for a tax sale for 2021 have already been taken. I know we're doing a lot better job. I know when I first moved here, there was four or five, six years that we had right. back delinquent taxes. And our tax collection this year, um, again, if Abby's right there, I think we were actually higher this year than we have been in years past. I don't see her right there, so she can't confirm that, but <laughs> there, she <is. laughs> there she is. Sorry, kids had to run. Was it, what was the question? <laughs> uh, can you confirm that we have collected, we collected a higher percentage of taxes this year than previous years? Can you confirm that we were collecting a higher percentage of taxes this year than we did in previous year? Um, yep, so what it happens is after October 1st, we have a final or amount that's delinquent, whatever's not due. If you look, I guess I'm not fully understanding, Scott, what you're looking at. Um, because if you look at 2017 collections and then 2018, 2019, 2020, um, like for 2020, we've already collected 30,000 of what, what went delinquent. 2019, they collected 18,000. 2018, 7,000. So every year that's gone up. Kathy sets up a letter to everyone that can set up a payment plan for how the delinquent taxes work. You have to set up some form of a payment plan. Um, she works with everybody as long as they're making a payment every month. They get notices every month about the balance that's due. Right now, the plan is to go forward, I believe, with a tax sale this year because we did not last year. So what that means is anyone that is delinquent that hasn't made a payment, hasn't set up a payment plan, pretty much has had no communication, we will send everything to the town attorneys and it will go up for tax sale. Like Josh said, we couldn't do it last year. There were some restrictions because of COVID, but it's my understanding the restrictions for that have been lifted. So that will happen um, not until after March 2nd, um, but we the plan is to get that rolling. So I don't know if that really answers your question, Scott, because I, like I said, I'm kind of confused because we've been collecting, it's been increasing every year for what we've been collecting for delinquent taxes. It's Scott Krieger. It just seems every year that there's the same people on the list and then the numbers keep growing. So, I mean, it's great that you've collected 30,000 of the 90,000 that's, that's outstanding. Is that something, is that listed somewhere that, you know, us as townsfolk can see that these, these folks are making an effort to pay their delinquent taxes instead of, you know, just sort of being on this list and, uh, and uh, you know, in the annual report. So this list that you're seeing, um, there, there's a list where we put as of December 31st, who is delinquent. Um, that list was much longer and higher. So it's it's great that it's where it's at. Um, quite honestly, the last two, three years or three years since I've been in, it's been the lowest amount that we've had delinquent. So it has been improving. Um, as far as posting what people's payment schedules are and how much they've paid, I don't think that's anything we've ever done. Um, Kathy has all the forms and has a plan set up with them, but I don't believe that's ever been posted as to what people's payment schedules are, just that most people are doing their best that they can and making payments. Right, I wasn't looking for their individual payment schedules. I was just looking to see that, you know, after, you know, X time frame, you know, this is what has been collected of those delinquent taxes, you know, so that that number can be updated and, you know, we can stay more informed about, you know, folks that are having, you know, that try to reduce that bottom line if you will to help, you know, the town general fund. Um, I do know that Kathy does give a report to the select board every month that states what the balance is left each month on delinquent taxes. Um, what we could do is maybe work with Tammy, who is the minutes taker about maybe just putting a note in the select board minutes, maybe once a month when they get that report as the balance of delinquent taxes is now at, you know, 80,000 versus the 89. That's something the select board would have to 
decide on and um, go from there. That would probably be the only option I see kind of reasonable for that request at this point. Uh, Scott, as a point of information, uh, that is not a select board responsibility. Uh, the town elects a town clerk and collector of delinquent taxes. It is not up to the select board to choose when those taxes are collected. However, Kathy is very good about informing us when she is going to do a tax sale. And keeping us informed about uh, what is due. Is there any other questions pertaining to hopefully Article 11? We have discussed Article 12 at this point too. So if there's questions in regards to Article 12, we'll take them now. I don't see anybody getting really excited. So we're going to move to article 13. Shall the town appropriate $15,000 to the equipment fund? Mark Doremus asks, are there any funds for replacement of the grader 30 years old? That equipment fund is for the purchase of new equipment. Uh, we put in $15,000. We plan on keeping $15,000 going into it every year. Um, we have separated uh, equipment fund and equipment repairs. They're slightly different than they have been in the past. Um, you see the balance on that, do you? That's what I was just looking at. I don't actually. But uh, this fund, uh, Article 13, is for the purchase of new equipment, Mark. We'd like to put more in it. We just didn't feel that this was the year to increase that particular line item. I believe it has 30. Uh, just looking real quick, I think it's right around the 30,000 mark. Um, that is not enough to buy a new grader at this time. Uh, <laughs> it might be enough to rent one for a summer. Any other questions on Article 13, Equipment Fund? Sorry, Mark, if you can give us a thumbs up, just if we answered that, just a, just a thumbs up in front of your, right in front of your face, I can see you. There we go, <laughs> Thank perfect. You, Mark. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay, moving to Article 14. Shall the town appropriate $19,000 for equipment repairs? The idea behind this article is that we'd like to keep an account for equipment repairs with $35,000 in it. We're not gonna ask any more than it takes to top it off to that $35,000 every year. This year, it's gonna take $19,000 to top that account off. By the way, if anybody has any problem hearing us, please speak up in the chat box anywhere and we'll try and address that issue. I have a habit of wandering away from my mic and people can't hear me, so. Seeing no other questions on Article 14, we'll move to Article 15. Shall the town authorize the select board to receive and expend for town purposes any additional gifts, grants, or other revenue in excess of those calculated in the proposed budget? We have one question from Linda McCall. Do you have any long-term plans to build a larger town garage? If so, is it on your radar for grant applications? Um, we have talked to 
the town crew about uh, our our road commissioner, I get I should say, and our road foreman about the town garage and updates that could be made to um, uh, increase its uh, appearance. Um, and one of the um, things that we're hoping uh, our new zoning administrator also said that she had some experience with grant writing. So we are hoping to tap into her abilities um, to help us along the way with any of the endeavors that we, we take on at this point. So uh, does that well, we answer talked, your question? We talked about putting a concrete floor in. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> um, does equipment operation expenses still go in the equipment repair fund? Equipment operation expenses would be covered in the road budget, actually. The only thing that would be covered in the repair fund would be repairs. And that's what we're hoping on that end is um, major repairs. Um, the nickel and dime type stuff, we're hoping we can still cover out of the uh, standard road budget. Any preventative maintenance, uh, oil changes, anything like that come out of the general road fund? Does that answer your question? That came from Brian Westcomb, I think. Yeah. It did. No, I mean the, the money the town pays itself for the use of equipment. What was it? He said, no, Abby, no, can I mean. That one, please? I can jump in on that one. Um, usually, if there is money left over in past years, we've done what's called retained earnings, um, which would be any money in the road budget left over, we would pay ourselves back. Kathy would track kind of the usage on the equipment that we use and the fuel and everything, and we would pay that back. Typically what we would do with that would be to put so much into the new equipment fund and then the rest would go into like an equipment repair. To answer your question, Brian, no, because there hasn't been enough money left over at the end of the budget year to be able to do that. And that's also why the equipment repair fund was established because the road has not had the surplus of cash to be able to do that anymore. Did that answer your question, Brian? Excellent. Any other questions on Article 15? Seeing none, we will move to Article 16. Shall the town appropriate $16,080 for dispatching fees? Uh, this is overseen by the St. Albans Police Department and they are responsible uh, for our 911 calls and service with um, the fire department. Just to add on this one, Lance, sorry, you know me, I don't keep my mouth shut. It always um, <laughs> this is based on per capita. We don't really have a ton of control over this number. The St. Albans City Dispatch Center usually, not usually, they send us an invoice with what our portion and what our cost is going to be. And they do all of the dispatching for the fire department, ambulance service, all of that for our area. So it is pretty vital for us to have that. Thank you, Abby. Uh, any questions on Article 16? Seeing none, we're going to move to Article 17. Shall the town authorize the surplus funds from the HF Brigham Library due to the COVID-19 restrictions amounting to $15,593.12 
to be returned to the, ge the town general fund for use in 2021. This was not a request from the town or the select board. This was a, a request coming directly from the library trustees. Any questions on Article 17? Ewan. Uh, hang on, we can't, uh, hang what, on Ewan, no. we can't hear you. I think, are you typing in? Okay, got it, nope. Uh, I'm just curious as to why that amount wasn't reflected in the increase in the town expenses. If you're anticipating this, you know, 15,000 bucks, then how come uh, that's not reflected in the increase in the town expenses budget that you that is in an earlier article. Let's count your chickens before they're hatched, Ewan. <laughs> uh, we have no way of guaranteeing that this money would be returned to the general fund. If we have a surplus in the general fund at the end of 2021, it will come off what we request for 2022. Got it. Thank you, Ewan. Any other questions on Article 17? Seeing none, we'll move to Article 18. Shall the town appropriate $35,000 for the HF Brigham Library? for the 2022 budget. Ewan. Okay. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Uh, I just want to note that that's a level funding from from this, you know, from the current year. Yes, it is. Yes. Hopefully, the COVID situation will relax and we'll find more people using the library again. Any other questions on Article 18? Seeing none, we'll move to Article 19. Shall the town of Bakersfield grant authority to the trustees of the HF Brigham Public Free Library to spend monies raised by grants and or contributions? Any questions on this article? Seeing none, we will move to Article 20. Shall the town appropriate $10,000 for the Maple Grove Cemetery? And just a note, as, as Ewing did with the library, this is not level funded, but this is actually down $5,000 from previous years, last year. Seeing no questions. Oh. Do we, uh, Kelly Flieger, do we know why it was less? Uh, no, we do not. Uh, it looks like Ewing may have an answer though. She's <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, I spoke to uh, Ron Marcotte, who said the difference was that this past year they were doing restoration, and for the next next budget, that this is just the maintenance, no restoration. I'll add to that, it's Abby, the, their maintenance contract um, is just for the mowing and just raking and everything of taking care of that, which Ross, Kip, Ross Allen typically does. And the 10,000 is just a little over what his contract with the cemetery commission is. So that will cover their expenses. And we got a thumbs up from Carrie. So th thank you for the question. We're glad we could answer that. Any other questions on article 20? Seeing none, we'll move to Article 21. Shall the town appropriate $10,000 for the Bakersfield Historical Society? It looks like Linda wants to say yep. something. Linda, we're going to open your mic up so you can address this. Okay, thank you. I would like to start off by saying that uh, we have a group of volunteers. Nobody at the Historical Society gets paid for their time and their contributions. And we did hire a carpenter in 2019 to put some flashing along the brick on that back wall. And when he put the ladder against that back wall, he found that that brick was loose. When the snow melted last spring after town meeting, we noticed that uh, we had some frost damage. You know, the Halloween storm soaked the ground and then we went right into a freeze. So when that frost came out, we had a lot of cracking and slipping on the brick and movement of that one story uh, addition that the Catholics had put on back in the early 1900s to use as their altar. So on the inside, we could see that there was slippage. On the outside, there was slippage and so we contacted contractors to get estimates for the work, and it comes just under $50,000. We've submitted for uh, grants, got denied on two. We're going to be applying for another one. This uh, third one is only $10,000 if we get it. There's no guarantees. There's a lot of competition out there, and we've been told that a lot of other, a lot of other Older buildings have suffered damage from that storm. So take a number, stand in line, and we work the best we can. What they're looking for is community support. And that's what we're looking for with this $10,000. We know that's a lot over what we've asked for in the past. And we're just hoping that the taxpayers can help us on that. We've tried to put the word out there on Facebook, front porch forum, flyers at the stores, to let people know what the damage is, to show them pictures of what's going on. And anybody that wants to come and look at the building, they can contact either Gary Foot or myself, and we can show you on the inside and on the outside what the snow will let us show. And uh, any questions? Call Gary Alice Gary or Alice Foot, 827-3042, or myself, 827-4475. And we'll help to answer your questions. Or you can ask right now. Thank you, Linda. That was a great description. And anybody that's seen the uh the pictures online, they, they do a great job of uh, showing you exactly what the damage is and why that entity needs that money. So thank you again, Linda. Thank you, Josh. Linda, there is a question from Abby. The question is, what happens if it doesn't pass? Will the building be usable? We will have to uh, get a loan. We've already got a loan application out. We haven't heard back, um, but we will have to get a loan. <clears throat> that cannot go 
another 12 months. I don't think it would even survive another uh, fireworks show because, you know, when they fire off that cannon at the beginning of the fireworks, it rattles that building just like an earthquake would. And that uh, brick would come tumbling down and we'd have to make sure there were no kids around the back of that building. Thank you, Linda. And you saw the message to you asking if you could put those numbers into the um, um, chat. Sorry, brain cramp. Follow up question. Yep. Sure. Uh, I can get that. We have another question. Uh, what is being done to uh, collections inside? Is there anything at this time, Linda, that would affect the um the items inside the historical items that are being kept there no those are safe those are in the main building the addition houses some artifacts on the stage area what it also houses are uh, american disabilities compliant bathroom and emergency exit and storeroom and the stage but the main portion of the uh, collection is in the main building and up in the old choir loft. Does that answer your question, Carrie? Excellent. Any other questions? <laughs> I see the question about the normal 3,000. Uh, uh, the town normally gives this does not pass the society account um that's i guess you can see that linda i can see that yes i have so, to say we have a very good fundraising committee right now and even through covid they were able to raise just under three thousand dollars last year and so if we don't get the ten thousand I'm confident this group will be able to get the 3,000 that we need to just heat that building and keep the electricity the, and those type of things. The insurance paid for, the basic expenses. Thank you, Linda. Any other questions for Article 21? The town did. Still okay. Um, all right. Seeing none, we'll move to Article 22. Shall the town appropriate the following sums of money? $2,776 uh, $2, to the Franklin County Home Health, uh, $1,332 to the Northwest Vermont Solid Waste District, $200 for the Franklin County Industrial Development Corp, $1,507 to the Northwest Regional Planning Commission, $600 for the Missisquoi River Basin Association, $500 for the American Red Cross, $100 to Green Up Vermont, $2,000 to the Fairfield Community Center, $100 for Vermont Rural Fire Protection Task Force, $95 for Vermont Center for Independent Living, and $600 to Northwest Counseling. Is that your phone? Tammy. <laughs> uh, we'll field questions for any of the following. Okay. So Tyrone Shaw, I would like to speak briefly about the Fairfield Community Center when that item comes up. That item is here, Tyrone, and we are willing to give you the floor. So just let us do our little computer magic here and if you would mute us. Yeah, 
Can you hear me? I'm, uh, you can hear me? Good, I'll settle for the mic. I don't need the floor, but thank you for the offer anyway. Um, let me just speak very briefly to, to this request. I'm sure as, as you know, the Fairfield Community Center <clears throat> is in fact closer to Bakersfield than it is to the town of uh, Fairfield Center. We're kind of roughly in the middle and we serve multiple constituencies, including many folks from the town of Bakersfield. Um, I am speaking as a member of the board of directors for the Fairfield Community Center, and I am a long time, almost 50 years now, resident of Bakersfield. Before procedures at the community center changed because of COVID um, in March, actually it was late March, early April, our community meals program served 178 folks from January through March 10th, which is about 26 per week and 232 meals were dished up. Um, our kids in the kitchen culinary classes were booked up before you could say homemade pasta and we had 18 kids attend the six week course with 12 volunteers donating their time and ingredients. Black Creek Adventure Camp last summer was a huge success uh, despite the many challenges of running a summer camp during the pandemic. 25 kids signed up for seven weeks of camp with Virginia Holloman leading a talented crew of five staff. Our food shelf remained open every Tuesday of 2020, entirely staffed by volunteers. In 2020, we distributed 20,147 pounds of food, and that includes 14,273 pounds of free food from the Vermont Food Bank and its partners, along with 4,848 pounds of bread and potatoes thanks to Hannaford in Enosburg. We had eight, 481 household visits and served almost 1,200 individuals. The number of donations from local businesses and members of our community was astonishing, and words can't begin to express how grateful we are to everyone who has made sure our shelves have stayed stocked and families in need have been fed. Some highlights. Um, from this past year, we've been able through grants to uh, thoroughly upgrade our heating system, which was way, way overdue. Uh, we had the village playground project with a lot of help from Valdemir and Bridget Garaby, Med Associates Incorporated and many local donors. Our playground at the community center had a major facelift. Lots of kids use this playground and they'll be happy to know we've installed a new swing set, a slide and a maypole swing. We're happy to report we have reached our fundraising goal and this project was entirely funded by donations. Thanks to everyone who has contributed and supporting to that. And I know a number of you in Bakersfield have done that. I'm happy to say the Maple Run Preschool uh, sharing is continuing to share space with us until June 31st. Wait a minute, June 30th. Uh, 2021, and um, it's really great to have kids back in the halls of the center again. Uh, all of this is to say that the center certainly fulfills a, a lot of needs in Bakersfield, in East Fairfield, in Fairfield, and other surrounding communities, including Sheldon. Thank you. Thank you, Tyrone. Are those numbers in the report that we received from you? Yes, sir. Yeah, they should be. Okay, excellent. We just, we're just double checking because she was having a hard time jotting them all down as quick as you were throwing them out there. So, any other questions on Article 22? I see Bill Irwin's comment. It is to everyone. So everyone who has the chat is has the ability to, to read that. Um, my eyes, I, I'm afraid I have the same issue as Lance right now. Uh, he's, he's thanking us for, or thanking everyone who um, was able to level fund or reduce their funds in order to offset this COVID season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
we we'd like to echo that bill we we appreciate the people who have requested money from us that you know we're able to level fund or decrease their budgets or in the in the the library you know be able to return possibly return unused funds to the town to help us get through this this time so we'd like to echo your your thanks yes seeing Paul Stanley would like to comment on Missisquoi River Basin Association Article 22. Are they sending you the messages directly now? No, I'm reading it off your screen. Oh. <laughs> you want my glasses? <laughs> he wants to talk about it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you could unmute, unmute Paul, Paul so he could address Missisquoi Valley River Basin Association. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Paul Stanley and um, MRBA has a report in the town report, not sure what page it's on, um, that highlights our activities for the year. I continue to be vice president and working under uh, John Little as president uh, who does a, a great job of uh, of good PR for the group, uh, so on and so forth. But I uh, wanted to point out to everyone uh, on a local basis that our group did uh, planting along the stream branch uh, right on Brian Westcomb's property, which is at the junction of 108 uh, King Road and Boston Post Road. Um, right on the left, as you're headed north on 108, uh, you can see the stakes there right now. Uh, the stems were planted last year, but uh, just would like everybody to keep an eye on those as you're driving by um, and look for hopefully some growth there. Um, Brian has had a concern with some erosion and that sort of thing that has gone on there uh, in that area. But uh, from a local basis, uh, that's, that's what the group has done and just wanted to point that out. The report's on page 42, Linda just said. Thank you, Paul, for that update and uh, keep up the good work. Is there any other questions on article 42 or 22? Sorry, on page 42 is what I was reading. Sorry. <laughs> Seeing none, that is our final article. However, I did say that if we finished before our allotted time, we would go back through and hopefully cover any other questions that came out of turn. I am looking through the articles now. We have a question on article six from John Thompson. The article is, shall the town authorize the select board to set a tax rate to cover expenses as voted? He would like to know, is this item just a procedural item? Pretty much, it depends on uh what is voted in and what is voted out uh, we'll take this up add it together and uh, that'll be the town share which is the smallest share and then we'll wait and see what the, uh, the board. state dictates that uh, the tax rate will be for the school tax and add them together i hope that answers if you're still on here John, if that answers your question, if you could just throw a, a yes in the chat box is would be. I don't either. John Thompson. John Thompson. He must went off. Okay. Put his glasses on, dummy. The next one that we got 
was on article seven. I did see yours, Ewing, that just popped up and we will we'll swing back around. Um, again, from John Thompson, article seven, shall the town authorize the select board to borrow money in anticipation of taxes? Uh, he would like to know, is this essentially a short-term bridge loan to pay expenses until taxes are received? Will it have an impact on the tax rate? It will not have a, an impact on a tax rate. Uh, in, the, in the long run, we'll have to budget interest into that, but uh, Abby would know more about that than I do. But uh, yes, it's a, a stopgap measure to cover our butts until the taxes are received. And off of what Lance said, this is Abby. Um, no, like he said, there's not really a long-term huge impact on the tax rate. It just, every time we have to get a loan, there's the interest with it. So we just have to budget that into the, into the budget, which in, it is considered in the road budget this year for the interest for the, it's called the tax anticipation note that we get as soon as the budgets pass. Thank you, Abby. Uh, there were no other questions. So swinging back around again, uh, Ewing asking article four, shall the town, uh, shall the Bakersfield voters authorize the select board to appoint a town clerk as provided in 17 BSA and 2651 E after the current term expires in 2024? Ewing would like to know what is the motivation here and what about the contradiction with the state regulations, 45 days, et cetera. Um, we, we did address this earlier, but I know, I know you got on a little bit late. Um, the purpose of this was uh, we were under the assumption that we did not have a um, person running for uh, town clerk. Uh, so as a way to reach outside of the town, it had to become an appointed position. Um, afterwards, we found out that we actually have two people running. So it, uh, an appointment is not necessary. However, if it does pass, uh, we voted on Monday in our normal select board meeting to take the vote of the town and appoint whoever is elected for that three-year term and appoint them for the next three years. Um, if it doesn't pass, then it would be the same thing. Whoever is elected would have the three-year term. Right. Does that answer the question? No. 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 <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't understand why someone from outside the town can't run in, in an election. They can, they but they weren't. Board. You know, uh, that, that doesn't make sense to me as an explanation. Yeah. No. Right. So right. the reason Ewing that this was there's no D this, on my name. It's Ewan. Okay, sorry. The reason this was brought up was because we were, we did not have anybody at the time that was running for that position. That was, we were under the influence that there was nobody running for that position in town. If that was the case, in order to get somebody, we would have to have reached outside of town. After we decided to do this, we then realized, we're told that we had community members. Obviously, we want community members to be in that position. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's nobody on this board that wants somebody from out of town doing this. Um, that, was, that was the thought process. That was the reasoning. And... Um, that's that's where it stands. It's at this point, it was uh, apparently too late to take off. So it's on there. Let's make something perfectly clear. 
if the town wants to continue to vote on who they want in that particular office, they need to vote no on Article 4. If they want the select board to appoint a treasurer after 2024, then vote yes for Article 4. Does that answer the question? Close enough. <laughs> I see there was another question from Paul. It is a general question about road crew, the road commissioner pager number. Is it published anywhere? At this time, website today yeah. it, it was posted on the town's website today paul it should be on there and under road commissioner and it can be made public i'm sure by somebody on facebook i'm sure it'll happen soon <laughs> i can actually put it out there right now if you'd like road commissioner's pager number is one Eight zero two. Slow down. He's writing. <laughs> four five two. Four zero two one. And that is also in the chat now. <laughs> any other questions in regards to any? articles we have covered all of them so at this point it would be a general question on any article S seeing none i would like to thank everybody who joined us um in the chat, there is a, uh, a little notice saying that this will be available on YouTube sometime tomorrow afternoon for a link. Please go to it if you have any questions or if you're coming up with any questions that you think might have been answered that you weren't here for. Anybody that you think would like to watch this video that wasn't able to make it to the meeting, um, anybody at all that, you know, could use this information, please forward them to that. And hopefully we will see you here again Friday night for a nice short meeting to clarify any other questions. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening and hopefully this is not the wave of the future. I'm looking forward to having a good old fashioned town meeting so where we can look all one another right in the eye, and call names, whatever else it does to make a good old fashioned town meeting day. You have a good evening.